What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So let's talk about the iPhone 8. I've had both the 4.7 inch iPhone 8 and 5.5 inch iPhone 8 Plus for just over a week now. And this video will be a review for both of these devices for the most part. I'll talk a little bit about my experience, what I like, what I don't like, but primarily the purpose of this video is aimed more towards answering the question of whether or not it's even worth considering the iPhone 8 as your next smartphone. And if you do end up getting it, is that a mistake? Mistake. Now, if this were any other year, I think we could all be in agreement that these new iPhones would probably be S upgrades, the iPhone 7S and 7S Plus. My theory is that Apple didn't want to be left behind with the S8 and Note 8 from Samsung, but whatever the reason, Apple calls these devices iPhone 8. Picking up the new phones, most people aren't really going to be able to tell the difference from last year's model at first glance. There hasn't been any major design change to Apple's iPhone for a number of years now, and the only thing that sets the 8 apart from the 7 physically is the glass back. The glass back, though, isn't a specific hardware change for aesthetics. It's instead just necessary to support the new wireless charging feature, a feature that's been around on a vast majority of other devices for a long time, but a feature nonetheless that Apple has decided to introduce with the iPhone 8, and a feature that I personally have used quite often. And being that Apple chose to use the Qi standard, I think this will really influence a lot of public spaces to embrace Qi even further, and motivate a lot of accessory manufacturers and furniture companies like we've seen with Ikea to incorporate Qi into their products. On the topic of charging, Apple also officially announced support for fast charging. Unfortunately, you need to go out and purchase some extra accessories to even be able to utilize this, which is a bummer. And for that reason, I don't think many people at all will consider fast charging to be a useful feature or a deciding factor in picking up this phone. It wouldn't be a new iPhone without some upgrades to the internals, which of course Apple did bring to the table with the iPhone 8, and while I could spend really an entire video benchmarking this phone against the 7, or even the S8, the Note 8, or any other Android phones, I'm just going to keep my thoughts on this pretty simple. This is the fastest and most powerful iPhone yet. That's a given. That's expected. It's also pretty much the fastest and most powerful smartphone on the market right now, simply on the basis of optimization. The A11 Bionic chip, coupled with Apple's in-house iOS software, means that even with only 2GB and 3GB of RAM on the 8 and 8 Plus respectively, the iPhone outperforms all other smartphones that might even have 4 or 6GB of RAM, and even has performance scores that compete against a 13-inch MacBook Pro, which is insane. While I wouldn't necessarily call it an upgrade, one change Apple made with the display is to introduce True Tone, something we've seen on the iPad Pro, and it's a feature that I think a lot of people misunderstand. The screen on the new iPhone 8, as far as pixel density and specs and all that, is exactly the same as the iPhone 7. The only difference now is that with True Tone, the color temperature of the screen will change automatically depending on your surroundings. So if you're in a dark place, the screen might dim and shift to a little more yellow color to make it easier on your eyes. Or if you're in direct sunlight, it might adjust to a brighter bluish color to help you see everything better. The True Tone feature doesn't really have anything to do with being a better or more vibrant display. Side by side with the 7, there shouldn't be any noticeable difference aside from certain lighting situations or certain conditions, where the 8's display will make viewing a little more comfortable. The last area of major change for the iPhone 8 was the cameras for both stills and video. Once again, the specs for the cameras haven't really changed much from last year, but they are much more capable within iOS. OS 11. Photos, I think this time around, look a little more saturated than they have with previous iPhones in my opinion, but still less saturated than Samsung I would say. In both good and bad light, details look good, not much gets washed out, iPhones have always just taken really solid pictures. You also have portrait mode of course and 2 times optical zoom with the 8 Plus's dual camera, but you also have some new options like stage lighting among other things, which in my opinion are all sort of comparable to a filter, which Apple says they aren't a filter, but I still think they're kind of gimmicky anyway. Video-wise though, Apple really entered into some uncharted territory with 4K at 60 frames per second and slow-mo 1080p at 240 frames per second. And these are abilities that no other smartphone had had before and really not many standalone cameras even had either. So props to Apple for making that happen. Aside from some improved speakers, which do sound really good, those are essentially all of the big upgrades to the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. Spec upgrades, wireless and fast charging, the True Tone display, plenty of new camera features. These are 
overall good changes that really do make the iPhone 8 a somewhat worthy upgrade from last year. And like I mentioned earlier, any other year, these would be all welcome changes and warrant nice big lines at the Apple stores. As a standalone phone, the iPhone 8 is great. The problem is that the iPhone 8 lives in the shadow of the upcoming iPhone 10, a massive change from anything we've ever seen on the iPhone, and a device that has most people's attention. The iPhone 10 is what most people are waiting for, and the iPhone 10, I think most people would say, should have really just been the only phone that Apple released. But I personally don't think that's true, and here's why. There are a large group of people who will choose the iPhone 8 and be more than happy with that decision. Those are the people who want to pick up an iPhone and experience the same iPhone they've come to know and love. They want the usual, familiar iOS experience. They want a home button and touch ID. They want some bezels to hold on to. They don't want to have to learn to deal with the new swipe interface that seems a little questionable on the iPhone 10 at this point. They don't want to have a notch coming out of the display, and they don't want to spend over a thousand dollars on a phone. Those are the people that will appreciate the iPhone 8, and those are the people this phone is for. And if you're that person, then buying the iPhone 8 isn't a mistake at all. It's the usual iPhone upgrade you've come to expect, and you should probably pass on the iPhone 10 for now. But if you're like me and are ready to dive into something totally new, the iPhone 10 is only a month away now, and that's the phone I have my eye on. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 in the comments below. Also, be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.